This is Robot in Three Days at Penn State, and this video is about our flip climb. This is a crazy mechanism, but we think it is actually doable for FRC teams, and this video details how we did it and the many warnings that we have if you are going to try to attempt this on your team. Um, why we chose to design this is it is a single motion that gets you to the level three climb. And we were able to do it in around five seconds, and we think that could be done in three or four seconds if done more optimally with a lighter robot. Getting into how the climb actually works, it starts by extending the grabber using a pneumatic cylinder that is back here in the robot. Once that's extended, um, there's two Neos here that actually turn the robot. So the Neos are driven through chain and sprocket on a four to one. And then there are these two standoffs here that after the claw has been extended, engage with this pin. And as the standoffs turn, it will push the pin around, which turns the claw. How this climb works is once aligned with the rung, you drive in until the upright fits right in this section. And then as the climber turns, this peg gets behind the upright, and now you're lifting your robot by twerking against this point and this point. Again, we estimate the forces to be around 1,000 pounds on this piece of steel and this piece of steel. Then also, your robot wants to torque away from the upright, which puts a lot of force on this point and this point. Then again, the final force is once you get to the top, your robot is going to want to fall downwards, uh, which puts a lot of force on this inside, this inside surface that contacts the rung. Our warnings for if you're actually going to attempt this. First of all, there are very, very non-trivial forces that are being applied to this mechanism here. If you have a 125-pound robot and the center of mass is on a 25-inch lever arm, that creates around 3,000 inch-pounds of torque, which at this 3-inch moment which is all you can do because the rung is 27 inches off the ground and the maximum height you're allowed to extend is 30 inches. So you can only have this three inch lever arm, which means you're putting a thousand pounds on either side of this steel pin. And this is why this is a giant steel welded assembly. Um, if you're going to attempt this, you have to do the math. You have to figure out what kind of forces your mechanism will be experiencing because this is not something you can just design based on looks. Our second warning is the alignment. Right now we have this hole right here that centers on the tower rung, and then the tower upright has to slide in between these two pins. This is very non-trivial for a driver to do, and a team will have to figure out how to do this better if this is actually gonna be achievable in a real FRC match. Our third warning is that there's lots and lots of weight up high, which made our robot very tippy when we're driving around. Um, our fourth warning is that even when you're in the air, there's very little buffer room for your bumpers to sag down, specifically in the, the direction away from the tower. So if the robot is being supported around this axis, it'd be, it's likely that once it's upside down, it's gonna wanna sag down this way and there's only two or three inches of sag before your bumpers cross the plane of the level two rung and you only count as a level two climb. Um, another warning is that the climb would be very hard to do in auto. Um, maybe someone could program that, but the alignment would have to be a lot better and swinging yourself off the ground and then back on the ground, disengaging from the rung uh, is much, much more complex than just grabbing the level one rung and climbing for auto. Thanks for watching this video, and we'd love to see some teams attempt this. Um, yeah, very crazy mechanism. Again, you have to do the math if you're going to design this on the forces and torques involved. Um, but best of luck to anyone who does attempt it.